Welcome to Hidden Riches. My name is Andrew Hill, and today I'm going to be talking about how I got to Sitka, Alaska. How myself, my wife, my three little kids, how we traveled from Virginia all the way across the country and got on a ferry and onto the island of Sitka, Alaska, actually, Baranoff Island, um, and to the city, the borough of Sitka. And so, several years ago, um, we left for Alaska in 2019, no, 2018, I apologize. 2018, we got back in 2020. Um, and so prior to this, like uh, 2016, we were in prayer with our friend Cynthia, it was Bethany and I and Cynthia, and the three of us would get together and have prayer often. And a lot of times when we would get together, um, because we've, uh, God has really knit us together, it's like this, threefold cord that Ecclesiastes describes, threefold cord of friendship, and um, and they were really grace to connect with the Lord together. Many times we'd slip in divisions, we would have um, just incredible encounters with the Lord, hearing his voice, and um, and just really enjoying him, enjoying the pleasure of his presence, the fullness of joy that's described in Psalm 16. And this was one of those times. So often three or four hours would pass and we didn't realize how long we had been together. Um, and we were in our living room in Lynchburg, the three of us, and we were praying and I slipped into a vision and I saw a native gentleman. I couldn't tell, you know, what tribe he was from, but he was native and he had on a jean jacket and the sleeves were embroidered and, uh, um, a pattern, a really colorful pattern. He was an older gentleman. He had his hair pulled back in a ponytail. And he was on a pebbled area, like maybe maybe a beach or shore. And there was pebbles all around. But there were like pine trees behind him. And I was like, is this New Mexico? Like I, I was like, where where is this? And uh, there was a little child beside him, a little boy. He was also native. And um, the older man presented a wooden eagle to the boy. Big wooden eagle. It was like, you know, I'm here on my back porch. It was, you know, pretty big, you know. And he presented it to this little boy. And then I came out of the vision. And I was like, Lord, what is this place? And so I learned with how God communicates, all revelation is invitation. So whenever God reveals something, whenever he pulls back the curtain, it's so that he is uh, he can draw you in and woo you into relationship with him. Everything is about relationship that God does. Everything that he does is about connection and making relationship um, with us, making uh, connection with us. So I knew to kind of shelf it. And I, didn't, I don't even know. I think I told everyone in the room. I told Beth and Cynthia. I said, this is what I'm seeing. I don't know what it means, but I'm going to shelf it. And I'm going to spend more time with him in the secret place and have him bring some revelation about what it is. So um, a day or two passed and Beth was upstairs in prayer. And while she was praying, she heard the Holy Spirit say, Sitka, Sitka, twice, just like that. And she came downstairs and she said, Drew, I think I know what you saw. And she started to talk to me about Sitka. Now, Beth had been in Alaska, I think it was 20 years prior at that point, before we met. And... Um, she was further up in Alaska. She'd only heard of Sitka, just like she'd heard of so many other places um, that she didn't quite visit. Um, she was with, I think it was Youth for America, I think. And it wasn't YWAM, I think it was Youth for youth on a Mission. And uh, Youth with a Mission. And um, while she did that, uh, she was in our Anchorage and, you know, a little bit further north from where Sitka is. And you have to keep in mind, Alaska... It's like if you took Texas and multiplied it three times, it's like three Texases um, stacked together. Uh, and, and as far as this, just the sheer size, it's like a completely different country. And it's like the redhead stepchild or it's like, you know, it's out of sight, out of mind. And even while we were there, many of the people treated it like it was um, a different country. And they, they didn't treat it like it was part of the rest of the country. A lot of times people there would say, man, I'm going down south. And they didn't mean like Mississippi or Louisiana or anything. They meant the lower 48. 
Um, so there were some differences once we got there, but just getting ahead of myself a little bit. So we had the voice of the Lord with Beth, and we had his voice where you can see his voice. Sometimes uh, you can see the Lord, uh, his voice. You can Sometimes you hear his voice, and sometimes you feel his voice. Isaiah 66 said, those who tremble at his word. So his, his, his voice, just his utterance, has an impact on us physically and spiritually um, and what we're able to sense in the presence and the spirit. So um, I began to plan. I began to look into Sitka and with many signs. And when I say many, I mean many. With many signs, he began to, the Lord began to confirm that Sitka for sure was the place that he was sending us to. Many signs. I mean, everywhere I went, there was something about uh, Sitka or Alaska. Sometimes it would be specifically Sitka. Sometimes it would be Alaska in general. And um, everything from nature signs. Uh, God was simultaneously speaking to me about a hawk and about the, 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 the significance of hawks. And um, from Isaiah, I believe it's 4611. I was quoting it so often during that time. And the passage says, I'm calling a man from the east uh, who will fulfill my will. He'll swoop down like a hawk. The ESV actually uses the word hawk. Some of our translations say a bird of prey and he will fulfill all my will. And so um, God is talking about King Cyrus in the passage. And that was a whole other thing. That's several messages within itself because God began to speak to me so much about the Cyrus anointing. He also began to talk to me about Donald Trump at the time. And he started to talk to me about Truman, President Truman, former President Truman. So all of this was happening at the same time. I was getting confirmation. We would watch a World Series. People's names were confirming things. It was pretty wild. Highly prophetically charged time. It was a time that was very charged with his voice. I couldn't go anywhere without some form of confirmation about this. So we prepared for two years. And I remember talking to uh, one of the leaders there of Eagle Quest, uh, Mike, Apostle Mike, and his wife, Roxanne, who's a prophetess. They didn't call themselves that, but uh, as soon as I met them in the spirit, I discerned what they were, what they, how they functioned, the grace that was on their life. And we had talked about the island and how many churches were there and how the people were receptive to the gospel. And, because we weren't quite sure why God was sending us. So we got everything together. I'll have to condense some of this because there was a lot to it. Um, but we left out that morning. Um, believe I believe it was in June. And we went out 2018. We left. And we, we drove across the country. And, of course, I'm going to forget so many details now. It's been a little while since I've talked about it. But uh, it took between 10 and 15 days, I think. But we get to see states I'd never visited. Um, we went to Wyoming and um, Montana. It was just an amazing trip. We saw Mount Rushmore. Um, it was just mind-blowing. And the kids had such amazing experiences heading up. So even on the ferry, when people were asking, oh, you know, what brings you to Alaska? When we crossed Canada and they said, you know, do you have anything, you know, harmful in your vehicle or weapons or this or that and the third? And they pulled us off to the side and they, and they freed us up to go. I remember getting out of the car and just shouting. I'm like, I'm in Canada. Like, I've never been to Canada. Like, it was so awesome. And we had no idea. It was like an Abraham kind of experience. We did not know why the Lord was sending us. And uh, and many times I'm just crying in the car, worshiping him to different songs. And I was worshiping God to Billy Joel. Like, <laughs> I mean, it was just like, like everything was just communicating to me about his love and destiny and what he was doing. It didn't matter what I played or what went on. Um, but it was uh, a really eye-opening experience. And even on the ferry, I remember I was talking to a teacher there. And she said, uh, so what brings you, you know, why are you going to Alaska? And I said, um, I think God is calling us to the native people because I had had a, a previous vision many years back um, that I'll share another time um, about native people. But it, they were out west. They were like in Arizona. It wasn't here because the ground was very ruddy 
and red and it was a cliff. Um, it wasn't Alaska. But I didn't know what else to say. And uh, I said, yeah, I guess if we get bored on one side, we'll just go to the other side of Baranoff. And I've never had anybody do this to me. She just looked at me. She just went like that. Because there was no other side to the island. Baranoff's about the size of Delaware, the way it was described in the books I read. And Sitka technically is only about 14 miles of road. So the rest of Sitka, the rest of, uh, of Baranoff, as Muskag, which is swamp and huge mountains and bear country, you can't get to the other side. There is no road to get to the other side. I did not know that till I got there. With everything that we researched, everything I looked at, I didn't see anything about that. I even watched a YouTube video. This guy and his girlfriend were there. I tried to get that B. And um, I'll, I'll knock them down and I'll feed them to the dragons. But um, he, he drove all over the place. And I was like, oh, we'll just drive to the other side. And it's like, no. So when we got off the boat, it was early in the morning. It may have been like 2 in the morning. I couldn't sleep. And I, I got up that morning and prayed all over and just drove around, prayed all over the island. And we arrived on a Sunday. We went to church that Sunday. We went to Eagle Quest that morning. And that morning, Mike and Roxanne were there. They were currently living in Juneau, but we just happened to catch them. And the rest really is history. Um, but God revealed why he had brought us there um, through a series of things. I had gotten a job at search, which took a lot of prayer and just restless times of just pursuing the Lord. I remember walking out by the road and you could see the there's a dormant volcano called Mount Edgecombe and just beautiful water. There's just You were on the edge of the world. And uh, because it was the Pacific, I was seeing creatures I hadn't seen sea cucumbers, and they had they have these leopard slugs that look like rubber, like moving little balls of rubber. It's weird, and just just animals you didn't see where we were in the island. There were no snakes, you hardly heard any bugs at all, and they had no seams and a few little um, Sitka uh, bees. They were honeybees, but they were I think Sitka was actually in their name. They're unique to the area. Um, and like we, we stayed in a super eight for like two weeks trying to find a place. And the next day I walked across the street. I think this was Monday after service and Lyle and Jensen's was a furniture store. And they said hiring on the sign. And I went right in, put an application and the guy was like, you want to help us love the hot tub? And I was like, yeah. So it was like six guys. And that was my first job, but we needed more money and our money was running out and God, um, really helped move things along with the background checks and things. So I worked as security in the hospital. One of the best jobs I ever had and uh, loved it. And I would go on prayer walks around the building and the Lord started speaking to me because it, it, um, that when we first met Mike and Roxanne, I'm talking about the first day that Sunday, Mike says to me, he says, I see you behind this pulpit. I see you preaching. And he's like, do you preach? I said, yeah. I said, we're, we're ministers. And once they found Beth and I played prophetically, they were like, we want you to lead in worship. She, they were like, I don't care what it is. If it's if it's the flow of the Holy Spirit, just flow. I'd never seen people so open and willing to have you minister in their house. So um, we were prophesying over people regularly and preaching. On November 11th, I, I preached from Deuteronomy 11.11. And it was a prophetic word about us being there in this place that it rains very often. Sitka is a, um, it's a rainforest. Um, and so it was just a really, really wild experience. Um, but yeah, so we started to minister more often. And while I'm walking around the building at night in the hospital, I was just sensing in the spirit. I told Beth, I said, they're going to ask us to pastor here while they're in Juno because they had some leadership in place. But the offices that we walked in and the anointed we carried, they were like, we want you to take it over. And sure enough, they met with us and they wanted to do it. We asked the Lord. He said, no. Um, he said, I want you to remain autonomous. What I have for you to do, um, because we didn't know about Manifest Ministries. And God was preparing us for a whole new ministry. I, at this point, Beth and I both were really willing to just serve. We wanted to just come in and put up some chairs, not even use our gifts, just be a part of a body. 
and experience uh, body life together because we had done itinerary work leading up to that. And we had been in Iglesia Revolucion, who um, Apostle Fernando and, and Pastor Hazel sent us out. Powerful time there. Um, and when we started there, that we said, we'll be here for about a year and then we're moving to Alaska. So they knew from the very beginning. Um, but yeah, it's a, uh, it's a very, Sitka's an amazing place. There's even, there's still totems there. You go to Totem Park, you see these beautiful totem poles. And it rains a lot. Um, it's a it's a temperate a rainforest, and in the summer it stays about sixty five, sixty six. I fell in love with that temperature because it's like Virginia's fall. And um, and then one winter while we were there, it snowed like twenty plus times, which it hadn't done in twenty plus years. So it was really unusual. I remember leaving from work, and, and because it's so. Everything stays moist. The trees, no matter how much the sun comes out, puddles don't go away. Uh, I would lean up against a tree and feel the bark and it was still wet. I remember leaving from work one morning because I worked a night shift at the hospital and there was a black truck in the middle of the road. It was on its side. It, it was so icy. Like I was sliding. I got out of my car, went to the grocery store and I could slide down the parking lot to the door. Everything was just crystallized. Um, but it's just something I would never forget. It just seems just like a whole nother planet or world. Oh, and this is the last thing I want to end with. This was the biggest thing. God showed us while we were there. So Mike and Roxanne, they asked us about the pastor. We said, we don't hear the Lord saying no. And I said, but I do have a book that I've written. And the Lord's prompted me to teach it as a class. The Lord started talking to me what we're doing now. God, had start, he started to talk to me about it then. And he gave me a whole blue notebook, a big old thick notebook full of downloads and then I started to pursue I had a friend Scott Guntel my brother Scott Guntel apostolic brother he had posted something about three prophets that were emerging from Ryan Lestrange and Oscar Gabania that changed the trajectory of my life in ministry that one article and if Scott doesn't post that and I don't see it we may not have had the same level of confirmation from that I bought Revival Hubs Rising that Ryan Lestrange wrote with Jennifer LaClure, and everything changed. When I read it, I said, this is what has been in my heart for decades. You know, the, the hubs and the centers and um, the fivefold working together, the fullness of the fruits of the Spirit along with the gifts of the Spirit, the fivefold ministry of Ephesians 4.11. It was tremendous. And so God started to give us the DNA for our own hub while we were in Alaska. He said I was going to write three books, Manifest, Hidden Streams. We'd have multiple classes. So we started to do all of that. So the first time I taught the class was at Sitka. And I had the book. We had copies made. Um, we sent um, the PDFs off to Ohio. They printed copies off. We shipped them to Virginia. And then Virginia shipped it back to Sitka. It was cheaper to do it that way. So our first book looked like a manual. It looked like a, a guide. And on the way, after Mike and Roxanne gave me the green light to teach as a seven-week class, on the way to our first class session, the Holy Spirit filled the car. The, the presence of God was so just familiar and strong in the car. And he said, this is why I brought you here. I'll never forget it. And that night I taught, before I even taught, Isaac, one of the guys there, he quoted from Job a passage that says, the Lord will speak in this way and that way. Um, in one way and then another. And he said, I'd, I'd never seen that verse until I was about to come tonight. And manifest is all about hearing God's voice in the different ways he communicates. Uh, and it's a foundation for all the other classes we have. We have like eight. So that's that was really the start of manifest. While we were still at Super 8, the Lord says, this is, your, this is the time of your manifestation. I didn't know what any of this meant. It was all new to me. But God has a very interesting way of doing things. He sent my wife and I to Jamaica when we were just, we just were attending the same church together. We had had a class in high school, but he sent us to Jamaica on a missions trip to tell us we were to be married through prophecy. Uh, we would be husband and wife. And he sent us to Alaska to confirm the ministry. 
that we had. And he showed me that one day while I was driving around outside the hospital late at night. I took you to Jamaica for you to find your wife. And I brought you here to Alaska so that you know have your ministry. And that's how Manifest Ministries began. And that's why I was in Sitka. We came back during a very tumultuous time. COVID um, was having its way in the States. There were race riots. Certain states, if you, uh, my wife's driving off to get a few things. Um, if you stopped in certain states, you'd have to be there for two weeks. Um, we went to Four Corners to, to try to see it because Beth and I had seen it early and the boys hadn't seen it. And uh, we couldn't, it was closed off. A lot of the tribes, the Navajo tribes, they were trying to protect their elders. I remember going to a gas station that was predominantly native, the, like it was like, I think a Burger King and a gas station that was all run by native families and people. And I went to the gas station and a big tall native gentleman shut the door in front of me. And the sign said only two or three people in at a time. And one had just walked in. And I was like, okay, I put my hands up. I was like, man, he's not playing around. And then he opened the door when the guy left and let me in. They were not fooling around. They were trying to really protect their elders and their people. So we had that, like I said, the, 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 the tumultuous race riots, um, uh, George Floyd, all of those things were happening all at once. And we were coming back in the midst of that. And that's how we visited Marfa and a few other places. It was in the middle of that. So God is good. He gets you through these incredible times. And I know there's so much more I'll think of when I stop this video. This is a little bit of a longer one. But I pray that it blesses you all. And I hope some of my friends and family from Sitka, my extended spiritual family, you get to see this. Because men like Perry, Comos, and Isaac and Jessica, uh, Mike and Roxanne, um, Tuffy, and what were special people, Keith, um, they're still in my heart. Kyle, these are people that are in my heart and they mean a lot to me. And there's so many more stories, like I said, I could tell you, but um, this is just how I got to Sitka. It was through the voice of the Lord and much confirmation and, na and natural signs. So it was his voice, it was visions, nature signs, confirmation. He used a lot of different ways of communicating that, hey, this is where you're going to be going. Oh, and when we got there, I met a man that resembled the one in my vision. And I told him I was at a different church visited. I think it was to hear Perry speak. And I said, you look like the person in my vision. And I told it to him. I think I gave him a copy of Manifest. And I said, um, I don't know if he caught everything I meant. but uh, And we, I saw a wooden eagle just like the one in my vision. Someone had one um, in their garage. Um, it was huge. I was like, man, that's just like the one I saw. So it was just stuff like that all the time. They had ravens the size of cats, big cats, eagles every day. You'd see a dozen eagles and grizzly bears. The first week we were there, just came up on a grizzly sow with her with her cub. It's scary, man. I had the kids go back to the car. You, I couldn't hear her. I couldn't smell her. She was kind of up from us, maybe 60 yards. Crazy. And then right before I left, I saw a grizzly. And then we saw, of course, fortress of the bear there where you could see uh, the brown bears there. So... Uh, awesome stuff. I love you guys.